In this video, I'm going to be working through some even problems from our textbook so you can see the solutions. Number 10, the problem is cotangent x times tangent x. And the first thing that I notice is that these two expressions are reciprocals of one another. And the product of two things that are reciprocals is going to be 1. So this is a very easy problem. If you need more convincing, you could use the quotient relationship and you can say to yourself, well, the cotangent of x is cosine x over sine x. And the tangent of x is sine x over cosine x. And in this problem here, everything cancels out. The cosines cancel, the sines cancel. So once again, you're left with this answer of 1. So the thing to take away from this problem is that anything times its reciprocal is 1. In number 12, we could start by using the quotient identity on cotangent u and call that cosine of u over sine u. And then we'll leave sine u alone. Or we could call it sine u over 1. It's the same thing. And the sine u's will cancel out. And you're going to be left with just cosine u. For the third problem, number 14, because there are elements that are squared, it's a sign for me that I should consider using the Pythagorean relationships. And I know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And if I just take this relationship and I scramble it and sort of manipulate it to look like this, that is going to be equivalent to sine squared theta over the existing sine theta that was already there. So this is going to cancel to just sine theta. Number 16 looks a little intimidating, but what I like to do in my class is, again, look for Pythagorean relationships, particularly when the trig expressions are squared. So I'm going to implement a procedure that I call the telephone, because the authors of these problems will sometimes do this. They'll write the two, the things that you need kind of far away from each other, but if I circle like this, it kind of looks like an old school telephone. And again, because sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, all the things inside the phone are 1. The thing that's not in the phone is tan, tan squared u. And this is over secant u. So now off to the side, I just want to remember that uh, 1 plus tan squared is secant squared. So that's sort of a nice thing to have at your fingertips. So what I can do now is I can replace 1 plus tan squared with secant squared u over secant u. Simplify, and the answer is just secant u. So something that looked particularly intimidating in the beginning because it had three terms and they were squared, it didn't turn out to be so bad. Number 18 has us using the odd even identities. And my strategy for this type of problem, whenever I see the negative x, is just to think about what the sign would be, that, that is the S-I-G-N, in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, we know that secant is negative. I'm sorry, positive. So it says secant negative x, which says to me, what is the sign of secant in the fourth quadrant? And that's positive. So this turns into secant of x. Here, what is the positive or negative of cosine in the fourth quadrant, and that's also positive. And then we have a situation where we have something times its reciprocal, so the answer is 1. Once again, with these odd even identities, I'm really just asking myself, what is the SIGN going to be in the fourth quadrant? So in the fourth quadrant, cotangent is negative. And in the fourth quadrant, tangent is also negative. Well, 
Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, and then anything times its reciprocal is one. So the answer here is positive one. In number 22, I'm gonna focus my attention first on this. And when authors square a trig function, they write the two here, but that's the same thing as this. This is pretty important. So this is the secant of negative x, all of that squared, minus tan squared x. Okay, in the fourth quadrant, secant is positive, so this becomes secant x squared minus tan squared. I wrote the two on the outside, this power of two, but now I can put it back on the inside. And if we look at the identity, which I've written for you at the bottom, the Pythagorean identity, if we isolate um, one, we get one equals secant squared minus tan squared. So this equals one. In number 24, we have one plus tan x over one plus cotan x. And my strategy to, to simplify this problem is to use a useful form of one. And the useful form of one that I'm gonna use, I have a few options here, but the one that I'm gonna use is tan x over tan x. Remember that anything over itself is just one. And if you multiply something by one, you're not changing its value. We might change its appearance and consequently simplify it, but we're not changing what it was, what its value was. So in the numerator, when I distribute tan x into one plus tan x, um, you get an expression, but I think I'm gonna to choose to leave it in a non-distributed form. So I'm gonna have one plus tan x times tan x. So it's the product of the two things on top. Downstairs, I'm going to distribute. Tan x times one is tan x. Tan x times cotan x is something times its reciprocal, and that's one. So you may, you may notice that I have one plus tan x over tan x plus one. It's the same thing. One's written the reverse direction of the other, but they're the same thing. It's like three plus four and four plus three. They can be canceled out and you're simply left with tan x. Number 26 looks a little intimidating as well, but I think if we keep our Pythagorean identities at our fingertips and we refer back to them, this is gonna be very easy. Now I'm gonna write down <clears throat> one plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. Because I think the numerator is just a scrambled version of this, and it is. So I can replace the entire numerator with one, and then the denominator is sine squared plus cosine squared, which is also one, so the answer here is one. Oftentimes students will ask, how do I know when to stop simplifying? And it's a tough question to answer, but the best answer that I can give is just to do a lot of practice and look at the back of the book and see where the author stops simplifying. And you'll get a sense of what the correct final step is gonna be. So if I assign odd problems, make sure you check in the back of the book to see where the author has stopped. If I've assigned even problems, watch this video and see where I stopped. Okay, so in number 28, I'm looking through the problem and seeing what I'm gonna, my plan of attack is going to be. I think my plan of attack is to change everything to sines and cosines. So for the first term, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to say that this is sine theta. Here, I'm going to rewrite this using the quotient relationship. Sine of theta over cosine theta. The cosine theta, I'm gonna leave alone. I'll put it over one. And then this is indicative of the co-function identity, which says that the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. So this is the cosine of the complement, so this is equal to sine of theta. 
you might have to refer back to your formula sheet for this one because it's not used so much in this problem set. Okay, so let's simplify here. Uh, we have sine theta in the beginning. Then the cosines cancel out, so we're left with sine theta here plus another sine theta at the end. So we've got positive sine theta and minus sine theta. They cancel. So I think we're just left with sine theta. Interesting how this whole big mess of a problem just simplifies to something so basic. Okay, what I'm going to do in number 30 as I look at this is I think I'm going to um, FOIL the top, or more specifically, Florida. We know that FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. But in the case where we're multiplying a binomial by its conjugate, the outer and the inner are going to cancel out, and you're left with just F and L, so I call that Florida. So the product of the first terms is secant squared Y, and the product of the second terms is minus tan squared y. So again, it was the product of the first terms and then the product of the last terms. And all this is going to be over secant y. Now at this point, a Pythagorean relationship comes to mind, and that is 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And what we basically have here in this problem is just a manipulated version of that. Um, this, this whole numerator just equals 1. 1 over secant theta, or secant y rather. And then we'll just use the reciprocal relationship and call this cosine y.